Hi girls and boys, it's Michael G0POT here and this month Dennis from Kanga UK has sent me the latest mountain topper radio, the MTR4B. This is a four band, 20, 30, 40 and 80 meter CW QRP radio. So let's get this thing unboxed, see how it ships, look at some of its functionality and then hear it on the air. First out of the box is a note from Dennis at Kanga UK warning new users not to use more than 12 volts as this could damage the transceiver. I'll talk more about this when we review the radio in action. So here's the transceiver, nicely protected in a sealed bag inside a padded bag. The only other thing in here is the power lead. I've already cut open the bags to make this quicker and here we have the MTR4B. You can immediately see the similarities with the rest of the mountain top of family, but there are also some unique features. The radio shares the basic layout with its brethren, namely the trail friendly design, all of the input output connections along the back edge and the band selection switches looking just like the MTR3B and the larger display of the MTR5B. Note that this does ship with a protective coating on the screen. Finally, we have the four button control interface that works so well across this family of transceivers. The size is similar to the MTR5B, but it is noticeably thicker. Dimensions of the case are 108 mm by 81 mm by 34 mm deep, not including the sticky out bits like the feet and the BNC socket. So for our US friends, that's 4.27 inches by 3.2 inches by 1.34 inches deep. My radio weighs in at about 288 grams or 10.1 ounces, so it's a little heavier than the MTR5B. The back edge of the radio has the BNC aerial socket, 3.5mm or 8th inch stereo sockets for the key and the headphones, and a 1.7x4mm power socket that's common to all of the mountain toppers and radios like the FT817. A new addition to this radio are the flip down legs which are deployed by loosening the thumb screws at the rear of the chassis. The band switching uses three four position switches, so it looks more similar to the MTR3B than the six switch design of the 5B. The 4B and 5B are now shipping with much clearer 16 character by two line display, which is a huge improvement over the original when you have old eyes like mine. Let's get this powered up and look at some of the functions that will be very familiar to current mountain topper users. Firing up the radio, you can hear the current band selection enunciated in CW. You can also set up the radio to enunciate the current frequency when the function button is tapped if needed. The MTR4B can operate from about 6 volts up to 12 volts. The supply current power output of the transceiver will vary based on the input voltage and my radio had the following attributes. Note the advisory on using no more than 12 volts and be aware that some batteries can provide greater than the stated voltage when fully charged. For example, my three cell LiPos are marked as 11.1 volts, but when freshly charged, the output can be as high as 12.5 volts for some time until they deplete a little. If you're struggling, you can use a small DC to DC converter or go super simple and insert a diode or several diodes in series into the power feed to drop a small amount of voltage. The radio does display the supply voltage, but LNR do state that this can be as much as plus or minus 0.3 volts out, so if in doubt, check with a voltmeter. The 16 character two line LCD display is easy to read and is backlit with a whitish hue which actually looks great. The display shows the frequency, the key of speed and a prefix that indicates if it's in straight key or paddle mode, the time and the battery voltage. You can either power up the radio with a mono plug plugged into the key socket to put it into straight key mode or tap the function followed by the RIT button to switch between straight key and paddle. Note that to retain the time entered you'll need a small internal 3 volt lithium button cell, a CR1225 or equivalent. If you don't have this fitted then when you first fire up the radio there is a space where the time should be. The time can be entered each time you power up, but without a battery, it'll be lost when you power cycle the radio. Note that all other configuration settings, like message memories, are retained in flash memory and do not need the internal button battery to be retained. 
Wow, a lot of features to go through. Hang in there guys, we're nearly there. When we finish going through the features, we're gonna get this radio on the air at the top of a SOTA summit. This is Walbury Hill, gonna be climbing to the top of there in central southern England and uh, trying the radio on air. So carry on and I'll see you when I get to the top. The built-in Kia operates in iambic mode B and can be adjusted from 9 to 31 words per minute in one word per minute steps. Note that whatever speed you set for sending will also be used for the CW enunciation, for example when changing band. To change the CW speed, press and hold the function button until adjust K speed is displayed and then use either the paddle or the up and down arrow buttons to increase or decrease the speed. Pressing the up and down buttons tunes the radio. A single tap moves in 50 hertz steps. Pressing and holding either button tunes in 100 hertz steps at a rate of about 700 hertz a second. If you press and hold the up or down tuning buttons and then also press and hold the other tuning button, you go into super fast tuning mode, which tunes in 100 hertz steps at a rate of about 7.7 .7 kilohertz per second. Alternatively, you can press and hold the function button until you see DFE displayed. This is direct frequency entry. Using the paddles, you can now enter the frequency starting with the hundreds of kilohertz and ending with the hundreds of hertz. You can then either select exit to leave the menu without making the change, RE to reset and try again, or LD to load the new frequency. To enter short messages of up to 63 characters into one of the three memory slots, press and hold the function button until enter message is displayed. Just start sending your message and it will be displayed on line one. If you mess up, you can hit RE to re-enter your message or BS to delete the last character and then just carry on entering. When you're happy, select CK to check the message sounds OK. And once this is played through, the options will change to enable you to save to one of the three memory positions, or you can select RE to reject it and start again. The MTR4B has a tune mode in case you need to use an external ATU. Press and hold the function button until you see tune displayed. Pressing the dip paddle briefly will transmit a constant carrier and pressing the dial paddle will turn off the transmitter. In tune mode, the MTR4B reduces the output power starting off very low and increasing to about a third of the normal output power over a roughly 10 second period to protect the PA stage. To set the time on the MTR4B, press and hold the function button until you see time displayed. Time is entered in hours and minutes in 24 hour clock format. Again, you can select exit to leave the menu without making a change, RE to re-enter the time or LD to load the change. The time should now be displayed between the Kia speed and the battery voltage on the main display. Note that the time will only be retained through power cycles if you add a button battery and that LNR state that the battery will typically only last three to four weeks and as it becomes weak it can cause problems powering the radio up. It's so quick to set the time when you start the radio you may not want to bother constantly having to open up the radio to swap batteries. The final menu option is used to set and store radio configuration. Press and hold the function button until you see config displayed. Here you have four options. Pressing MA toggles the Morse enunciation feature on or off. When you press MA it will enunciate either on or off in CW so you know the state. When on the radio will enunciate the current frequency with a single tap of the function button. Note that zeros are sent as T's and the decimal point is sent as an R. Pressing DM toggles the display Morse feature on or off. Again, the state is enunciated in CW. When on, anything you send using the built-in Kia is displayed on the main screen. Pressing ST stores some of the changes you've configured on your radio. The Morse enunciation setting can be saved as can the current Kia speed. The display more setting or any of the changes to the default starting frequencies don't appear to be saved or at least I couldn't get them to save. Pressing exit leaves the menu without making any changes. The RIT function can be activated by pressing and holding the RIT button for about a second. The frequency shift is then altered using the up and down arrow buttons. Pressing and holding the RIT button again turns it off. 
Finally, to send your stored messages, simply tap the KM button followed by the memory store button of your choice. You can pause a message by pressing and holding the DAR paddle. The manual says this pauses at the next word space, but I found it paused at the end of the character mid-word. Pressing and holding the DIP paddle will terminate the message currently being played. If you want to play a message over and over, like a CQ call for instance, until you interrupt it, you can play each memory in a beacon mode. Simply tap KM and then hold the memory button for the message you want to repeat until you see the word beacon appear on the display. The number after the word beacon is the number of seconds delay between each repeat of the message. During the delay, you can use the up and down buttons to increase or reduce the delay between repeats. Right, let's get this connected up to an aerial and see and hear it in action. Okay, here we are at the top of Warbury Hill, all set up and ready for action. I hope you found the video so far useful and that you've now got an idea of some of the features and functions that you're getting for your money. It's a well spec radio. So let's have a look at the setup and get on the air and see who we can work. So here we are ready to go. I've got the MTR4B set up on a three cell LiPo battery, uh, currently running at 11.8 volts. We're using the palm paddle and I've connected uh, the radio up to an NFED half wave uh, antenna for 20, 30 and 40 meters. So those are the bands we're gonna to try today. Let's start by uh, just popping the time in. Uh, so if I do UTC, 9.38. Load that. There we go. Now I don't have to use my watch. Okay, that was 40 meters. Let's have a little look at 30 meters and see how that sounds today.
oops, the perils of operating outside, having to deal with things like helicopters. Okay guys, I hope you found that a useful introduction to the form, features and functions of the MTR4B. Do I have any uh, negatives for it? Well, literally the only thing that I can moan about is um, the power connection. On the 3B and the 5B, they use a very high tolerance power socket, almost like an interference fit. With the 4B, they've gone for a more traditional socket with a single um, sprung contact and when you plug the power lead in, it feels a little bit loose, it wobbles about. Have I had any troubles with the power connectivity while I've been using it? None at all. I just think it's an experience thing. Um, no problems using it whatsoever. So, the question is, do you need an MTR4B? My feeling is, if you're into CW, if you're into QRP, if you're into SOTA or trail walking, a mountain topper by Steve Webber is really the way to go with the radio. It's an absolutely fantastic little transceiver. The question is, which one do you take? Your choice is the MTR3B, the three band 40, 30 and 20 meter transceiver with a very simplistic single digit display. Tiny, the most fun you can get in a small package, I think. Do you go for the MTR5B, the five band, 40 up to 15 meters, getting ready for the uplift in sunspot cycle with its still very small form factor. Um, a fantastic little radio. The latest ones I think come with the larger character two line display. Or do you go for the MTR4B? Obviously, if you want 80 meters, if you're walking the Appalachian Trail and camping out, if you're camping out on a SOTA summit, I know our Scandinavian friends are particularly into the, the lower bands, then the 4B is probably the way to go with 80 meters. You have the flip down legs, which is fantastic uh, for operating from a picnic table. The trade-off is a little bit more thickness and a tiny little bit more weight. But when you're talking a super tiny radio like that, it's really not a great big deal. Guys, whichever transceiver you'll decide to use, get out there and enjoy your radio.